Welcome back to P2 Aero, where I'm building the new Rans S21 all-metal airplane in my home garage, and I'm documenting the whole process right here on this channel. I'm kind of in a parts acquiring phase, as I find myself somewhat paced by budget, as I'm sure many of you out there can relate. As most of you know, I've decided to go with Dynon for all my avionics in this aircraft, and the current plan is to lay things out like this. If you find yourself out there panel dreaming, jump down in the description and follow the Dynon link over to their website and look around. You'll find manuals and all kinds of other things to read and learn about. They have basic systems, all the way up to fully decked out HDX systems like I'm going with, and they're very competitive with their prices. I think you'll find that Dynon has designed a very user-friendly system, and they take a lot of the guesswork out of wiring up your own airplane. If the thought of doing your own avionics wiring scares you, then you're at the right place. I plan to document this entire process so we can learn together as I go in future videos. I've found the customer service at Dynon to be top-notch. Since I simply can't write a check for everything up front, we've developed somewhat of a workflow in the order in which I'll need things to keep the build going, ordering just batches of parts at a time. So here's a big heartfelt thanks to Dynon for taking the time to make every customer feel appreciated, not only the ones that can write a big check. I'm really looking forward to getting into wiring things up real soon, so stay tuned for that. For now, I thought I'd show you the first batch of parts that I have received starting with this dual band ADS-B box that I have somewhat mocked up behind the passenger seat area, just under the baggage floor. My thoughts are that keeping the coax antenna runs as simple and short as possible will aid in easy installation when it comes time to do so. Also, not having to worry about those cables routing throughout the aircraft is a plus. For every box, Dynon offers a pre-designed harness making things super simple. They also have antennas for both ADS-B and the transponder as you'll see. Next I have the 2020 compliant GPS antenna. This little fella not only feeds the screens but also supplies the transponder with the WAS information making for a super clean ADS-B compliant installation. In the manual they outline mounting limitations with anything that has restrictions. For the GPS antenna it's important to locate it in an area with a clear view of the sky and at a safe distance of about three feet from other antennas. I'm choosing back here for mine since I'll have the COM and ELT whip antennas up in the two corners where I put the doublers. I'll get to mounting the GPS antenna real soon. Here's the transponder antenna. Both it and the ADS-B receiver antenna are very similar looking and I plan to locate these after the header tank on either side. Like other antennas, it's a good idea to have these spaced out sufficiently to not have any issues with reception or transmit later. Do your homework before drilling the holes in your new airplane. I'm open to hearing your concerns or other ideas so let me know in the comments what you would do. It's common in the more modern systems like this to have all the boxes communicate via a data bus system. This is Dynon's version of that and it'll be located just aft of the pitch autopilot servo and anything after this needing tied into the network like the remote magnetometer I have mounted in the tail will terminate here allowing for a single harness running up to the panel. Here I have two of Dynon's 42 size autopilot servos. I had concerns that it would require some modification to the RANS mounts since they use Garmin stuff but everything looks good to me. I did change up the hardware a bit since I couldn't use lock nuts so I wanted provisions for safety wire. All of this will be taken apart again before final install I'm simply just mocking things up trying to find issues beforehand. I can't really locate these yet since I don't have the finishing kit and I don't know exactly where things should be in relation to the control system that's in those kits. But they will live in this general area and that's close enough for me to build the harnesses required. I did get two harness kits for these servos and you'll see those here shortly and with the network hub so close the network connections are going to be super short. I will run the power and ground up behind the panel to the PDM and ground bus. Here's a quick look at the brand servo install kit. All the metal seen in the fuselage along with all this hardware makes for a very complete kit from what I can tell. And on to some non-Dynon parts. I managed to score a display model keypad off eBay at a great price. I've ordered the button inserts for each item that I need and I'll show those to you when they come in. I think this is going to be a very clean way to have all the switches I'll need in one place. It'll communicate with the PDM over data bus and control anything I tell it to. Each button is backlit and the color is customizable for any user defined state. Off can be white while on is green and a fault is red for example but the possibilities are really endless. I did learn that the EarthX battery shouldn't be inside the cabin unless it's a vented model so I moved things up front to the bottom of the engine mount. I'll leave it mocked up there 
for now just to make sure I like it there when more of the systems go in as we progress on the firewall forward. I've also got two Walbro GSL 393 pumps. They'll live somewhere up under the pilot seat similar to a factory installation along with the filters that I haven't gotten yet. I'm thinking the regulator will live up here someplace on the left side of the engine mount. And the intercooler will probably be someplace on the right side, although all this engine related stuff is just an initial guess. There's a million sensors and components to figure out, and as I get more parts, it's bound to change and shift around, but I'm making good headway at figuring out the details. I think I'll end it here, but thanks for checking in on the project. Make sure that you sub to the channel to stay up to date on its progress, and let me know what you're thinking in the comments below.